Good morning, everyone. Very warm welcome to you all, those who are joining us here in the meeting house and those who are joining us online as we worship God together today and as we celebrate the sacrament of our Lord's Supper. Things will have to be slightly differently done in regard to the Lord's Supper at this time. And in the pews in front of you, you will find uh, a ready-filled communion cup with uh, a little bit of bread, a little wafer in the top of it. Uh, You will find, perhaps, that there is a separate clear layer, which should ask you to take off. These can be a little bit fiddly. So maybe if you have a chance to make sure it's ready before the communion service by taking the top layer off, and then when we come to share the wine together, take off the purple layer as well. And we will celebrate the sacrament later on in the service. This week, we were hoping that we may be able to have a session and committee meeting with the extension of the coronavirus restrictions. Those meetings will now have to be postponed again. This morning there will be a a children's activity box if there are any children, uh, but there will be no children's address. For several years, we've been uh, supporting Scripture Union's E3 Schools Ministry in Antrim, and they're unable to have their 10-year celebration service as planned, so they're having an online service, a celebration service, live stream this Wednesday, the 18th of November, 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, the link is available from Khalid website is actually taking place in Khalid Church and in Khalid's website and on Facebook page there is a link if you want to join in with this. Sadly today we have to record the death of two of our faithful members. First of all Mr Robert Wallace and to Joan, Linda, Helen, Karen, and the family circle, we extend our love and our prayers. And then uh, Pam White, and again to Norman, Keith, Rodney, Helen, and the family, we extend our sympathy and our love at this sad time. Let us come together now in the worship of God. Praise the Lord, O my soul, says the psalmist, All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We join together in our opening hymn as we remain seated. God is here as we, his people, meet to offer praise and prayer.
Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. O God, we come together as your people to offer our praise and prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We thank you that you are a great and mighty God, a great creating God who made this world in all its beauty, a loving and redeeming God who through Christ has redeemed the world, a God who has sent his Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, encourage, instruct, and sustain us. So, Lord, may your Spirit work among us now to inspire our praise, to challenge us with your truth, to equip us for service in your world as we rededicate ourselves around the Lord's table today. God of light and truth, you are beyond our grasp, our conceiving. Before, the very, before your very presence, the angels veil their faces. And so, with lowly reverence and adoring love, we bow before you now. Your word says, God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Merciful God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. So as we gather around the table of our Lord, we humbly confess our sins and ask for your mercy. We have not loved with a pure heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not done justly, loved kindly, or walked humbly with you, our God. Have mercy on us, we pray. And in your loving kindness and great compassion, cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within us. Do not cast us from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from us, but restore to us the joy of your salvation. And sustain us with your bountiful spirit, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We read together from God's Word. And we read in the Gospel of Matthew his account of the Last Supper. Let us hear the Word of God. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. We thank God for his word. Twenty twenty vision is often used to depict what we call perfect vision. It's actually what you should be able to see at a distance of 20 feet. So some people would say the only perfect vision, the only 2020 vision, is hindsight. I wonder if you've ever said, 
If I had known then what I know now, I would have, or I wouldn't have. We make decisions on a daily basis, not knowing exactly how they will turn out. Perhaps we make a decision because we are on a deadline. Then we often learn new information, which, had we known it, might have caused us to make a different decision. When we have all of the facts, we can always see more clearly. Would the government have made different decisions back in March if they had known how things would turn out? Would they have encouraged us all to eat out to help out if they would known it would spread the virus even further? Probably not. On the evening before the crucifixion was to take place, the disciples, along with Jesus, gathered in the upper room. Matthew's account we read tells us of several things that place look at, look, took place that day. The preparations made for the Passover. Jesus would wash the feet of his disciples. Jesus would identify Judas as the one who would betray him. Jesus would give his last instructions to his disciples. And Jesus would institute the Lord's Supper. Apostle Paul records for us in 1 Corinthians 11 the details that he was given by the Lord of what happened at the Last Supper. At the close of it, when they had received the bread, Paul tells us Jesus said, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me, or do this to remember me. The disciples were puzzled, totally puzzled by this. They were still trying to grasp what Jesus had been trying to tell them about him going away, but they didn't understand it. It must certainly have troubled them because the words he was speaking were strange. They were a bit like words that would be spoken at a memorial service for someone. Looking back and considering the life someone has lived, the highlights, what they stood for, and what their legacy was, and how we would honor them. But Jesus was speaking these words while he was still alive, there with them. And so they were more than a bit puzzled. Yet, with hindsight, after Jesus rose again and ascended into heaven, when they had received the gift of the Holy Spirit and when they began the work Jesus had given them to go and tell the good news, then what had happened at the Last Supper became very clear to them and very important to them. As they began the work of spreading the good news, building the church they realized the importance of coming together, as Jesus had told them, and remembering what it was all about, what he had done for them, and the importance of the symbols of bread and wine taken over from the Passover made it very real to them. Maybe sometimes we wonder what it is, maybe even forget what we need to remember as we come together and break bread and drink wine. We remember, first of all, what Jesus has done for us on the cross. His birth changed history, B.C. to A.D., before Christ to Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. And even though the secular world has tried to change it to B.C.E. and C.E., the common era, the numbering stays the same. Jesus literally changed history. H.G. Wells said, I am an historian. I am not a believer, but I must confess as an historian that this penniless preacher from Nazareth is irrevocably the very center of history. Jesus Christ is easily the most dominant figure in all of history. But in actual fact, the major event that changed history wasn't just the fact that Jesus was born or that he lived a good life and he taught some absolutely wonderful things. It's his death on the cross. It is the pivotal moment in human history. For without his death, human sin cannot be forgiven. We can't experience the peace that forgiveness offers to us. What Jesus did for us on the cross, as well as all humanity, 
The late Dr. Billy Graham said that he often thought that while Jesus was on the cross, you and I and he personally were in his mind. An amazing thought, that. The cross is such a pivotal point in history because that's where everything changed, where forgiveness of sin and salvation by faith were made possible. And Jesus was saying to the disciples at the first Lord's Supper, and he's saying to us today, and every time we do this, don't ever forget it. The cross is everywhere. We have it in our churches. People wear them as necklaces. Cemeteries are covered with crosses. Churches have them. Some even use them as a lucky charm. We may fancy them up, adorn them with gold, But the truth is that the cross was a rugged piece of wood designed for the sole purpose of executing those guilty of serious crimes. Crucifixion was reserved for those who had committed the worst, murder, theft, criminal violence, rebellion against the government. It was the most painful, most publicly humiliating kind of execution. People were crucified naked on the sides of the road for all to mock them as they passed by. Crosses were for the guilty. But Jesus wasn't guilty of anything, and that's the difference. Because of his great love for us, he could take on the guilt of our sins, shed his blood for us, and protect us from eternal separation from our Heavenly Father. Why? Because he loved us. Because God so loved us. Love drove him to the cross. And that's what we have to remember today. Jesus, what he did in love for us. We also remember <coughs> pardon me, that Jesus is Lord. Communion we're about to celebrate isn't just about remembering what Jesus has done for us, but even just about being thankful that he has saved us. It's about recommitting ourselves to him and his service. It's about putting him first in our lives, allowing him to rule over everything as Lord. In Romans 14, Paul says, For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You may have heard the quotation from the missionary servant of Jesus, Hudson Taylor. Christ is either Lord of all, or he is not Lord at all. Theologian and writer John Roder talks about the person of Christ and his lordship over our lives. When he writes, Christians begin to deny their Lord when they admit that there are certain realms of life which would be inappropriate to bring Christ's rule to bear over. Of course, non-Christians will insist that we should keep our religion private and out of their way. But the reason for that is not that Jesus has nothing to do with the public realm. It's that they want nothing to do with Jesus. What we believe about Christ and his lordship over our lives must apply to everything, to all our behavior, no matter if our neighbors remain unconvinced. So today, as we gather around the table of our uh, Lord Jesus Christ, let us remember what he has done for us. Let us use now the words of our next hymn, uh, and particularly its final verse, as an act of rededication to Christ, uh, as the Lord of our lives, as we sing, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died.
is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is an open table, and we invite all who know and love the Lord Jesus as Savior, and all those who are members of any branch of the church universal, all are welcome to join us in the table today. Let's hear those words of institution of the supper of our Lord Jesus as recorded by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 11. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his, address, his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. With thanksgiving, now let us come to offer God our grateful praise in prayer. Let us pray. With joy we praise you, gracious God, for you created heaven and earth and made us in your image and kept covenant with us even when we fell into sin. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his life, death, and resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. So we join our voices with all the saints and angels and the whole creation to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to God the Father that our Savior Jesus Christ, before he suffered, gave us this memorial of his sacrifice to remember him until he comes again. So, Lord, send your Holy Spirit, we pray, among us now that in receiving these elements of bread and wine, they may be for us communion in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And in his name we pray. Amen. According to the holy institution, example, and command of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as a memorial of him, we do this. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The Lord Jesus Christ has prepared this table for all who love him and trust in him for their salvation. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And so together we take the bread, the body of Christ, broken for you. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The blood of Christ, which is shed for you.
The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. So send us out now in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please leave the uh, elements, uh, little containers, just in front of you. We join together in our closing hymn, Guide Me, O My Great Redeemer, Pilgrim Through This Barren Land. Go in peace in the knowledge of God's power. Go in confidence in the knowledge of God's strength. Go in joy in the knowledge of God's love. May the grace of Christ, which is daily renews us, the love of God, which enables us to love each other, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, which unites us together, be with us and remain with us always. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.